Welcome to a late morning that is actually now afternoon with all the cars in the world passing by. Hello friends, my name is Miro and welcome to my channel. My voice just went down, didn't it? I think my voice sounds as if I hit puberty in between the videos. Maybe I'm growing up finally. Do I have a bug here? I feel like there is a bug on me. What is this video about? Oh yeah. Today we will talk about the ideal potting mix for your lovely Hoyas. I will show you some of the mixes that I use and we will talk about three key elements that you need to look out for to make your own ideal potting mix for your Hoya. When you get a new Hoya, it is very likely that it will be potted in an organic potting mix. Usually it will be potted either in coconut husk or cocoa beet. These are the two mediums that are used by nurseries and by large scale manufacturers. Some of them might even arrive in sphagnum moss, but I find that it is less likely to happen. If you get a Hoya from a collector, there is also a possibility that it will be potted in their own mix, maybe something with sphagnum moss, spark, perlite, or maybe you will get it in inorganic media. Of course, like many of us, you may also buy Hoyas as small unrooted cuttings, and in that case, well, they will arrive in air, and air is good, air is fine. All in all, there is a high chance that you will have to repot or even root your plant. We will go through several scenarios that may occur. To all of those who are not interested, you can just skip ahead. There will be a timestamp that will lead you directly to the Hoya potting mix spiel if future Miro doesn't forget to put that in and at this point we don't know what will happen. First scenario is that the potting mix is too wet and it takes too long to dry out. In this scenario, it is your best bet to repot your plants straight away. Usually these come in a mix of cocoa peat, actually pure cocoa peat, and in my environment it takes long time to dry out. Currently my humidity is at 70%, so if I receive something that is already too wet, it will basically never dry out, it will stay wet forever. Cocoa coir or cocoa peat is usually used by large-scale nurseries and manufacturers, and it works really well for them in their conditions and with their style of growing. Usually the water and nutrients are deposited automatically very slowly, very small quantities, and there is little work for people there, so it, the entire system is automatic. Unfortunately, when these plants arrive to garden centers, workers there, bless their souls, just overwater the plant and they try to make a mud castle, I think, and just get all that oxygen out of the pot and make sure nothing is left but very wet cocoa peat. Now, of course, this is not a very ideal situation for you as a home grower because oftentimes when you purchase a plant like that in a garden center that is already overwatered, you bring it home, you will see that it will not dry out. And actually, you might notice that the roots are already dying back. In fact, if you don't get to the plant right away, as soon as it's delivered to the garden center, it is very common that the roots start to die back in the garden center because they overwater it right away. I'm sorry, but that has been my experience, I would say in nine out of 10 cases. Anyways, you will have to intervene right away. You cannot hope that the problem will just resolve itself. And let me tell you something about problems and expecting that they will resolve themselves. It does not happen. Eventually, all the problems start crawling out from underneath the rug and just ah, attack you. They do not resolve themselves, they do not go away. When you take your Hoya out of the pot, you can decide if it's just enough to repot the plant or will you need to root it again. You will see if the roots are falling apart, it means that they're dying back. You can try to trim them back and see if there is any of the health root system left. If there is, you can repot that to a fresh mix. If not, you will need to root the plant again. And that's fine. You Usually these garden center hoys are not very expensive, so it's okay. The second scenario that can happen is that potting mix is dry and your plant looks a bit dehydrated and no matter how much water you give it, it stays dehydrated. Unfortunately, this happens usually with hoys that arrive in coconut plug because they don't have time to water that in garden centers all that much. It dries out basically on a daily basis and the roots start to die back if you leave them too dry for too long. You will see when you unpot this plant, if the roots also fall apart, you know, they're kind of dry and they just turn to dust. It's time to either restart that plant or see if there is any healthy root left. Another scenario, the potting mix is fine, it looks good, the plant looks happy, but when you water, it takes long to dry out. This is basically a plant from scenario number one, but you got to the plant before the garden center worker. Congratulations, I would still repot this plant. Number four, 
The plant looks fine, the potting mix is dry, when you water it quickly dries out, but you have to water constantly to keep your plant happy. Usually this happens with coconut plug or coconut husk and you just got to the plant before the roots died out. They can still rehydrate the plant, but you need to water all the time. It's very hard to keep coconut hydrated in your conditions, in our home conditions, because they are used by growers in Southeast Asia and humidity there is very high. It waters every day and it's a very good medium for them because they don't have to worry about plant rotting. It's perfect. Unfortunately, it's not perfect for us as the home growers. Even if you have high humidity, you may not want to water all that much. You may want to have a life uh, beside your plants. That, that's a life, that's a valid life too, but maybe you want something more. Oh, shit bags. <laughs> That's funny. Stop looking at me. Don't look at me. I always repot plants that come in coconut plug or in coconut husk because one day repotting time will come. And even if the plant is okay and it looks happy, if it continues to grow the roots outside of that coconut husk or coconut plug, what will you do when you need to repot it? Will you just remove the coconut husk then? No, it's very difficult to remove. You will damage a lot of the roots. It's best to do it right away and then plant can start growing new, healthy roots in your conditions. I'm not a person who is in favor of just taking a plant with coconut plug and putting it in your own mix because you will most likely not get the exact same mix. So you will have coconut plug in the middle and you will have your own mix around this coconut plug. What this means is that you will have uneven moisture in the pot, uneven aeration, and roots will also dry out or get water at uneven rates. It's not an ideal scenario, so I would like to remove it right away. Sometimes I do destroy a lot of the roots Sometimes very few roots survive, but that's perfectly fine. I put it in my own mix, they recover, the plants are fine. In fact, I have several examples. First example is my Hoya sigillatis, and it looks fine. This plant is completely okay. Uh, it is in my own mix, in my own pot. The roots are growing, new roots. It was in coconut plug. I did repot it. I did destroy a lot of the roots, but it's fine. Another example is my variegated Hoya obovara. I moved it to my own mix and you can see there are new roots. I had to remove a lot of the roots to get the coconut husk away. And it's perfectly fine, it's growing. It has four active growth points. It produced new leaves. It's okay to remove the coconut plug. I think I did these two on camera. These are my two who I carries with different types of irrigation. This one didn't have a lot of irrigation. It's, I think it's improving a bit. They both arrived in coconut plugs. The roots look okay. They grew a lot, uh, so that's fine. I think there was bark in my coffee. Also, if you lose all the roots in this process, it is fine. I actually did buy a Hoya that came in coconut plug, but it was infested with root mealybugs, so I didn't even want to try to save those roots. I just chopped it all down. It's this tiny obscura. It is growing quite nicely, so it was a mess when it arrived. A lot of broken leaves and stuff, and of course, a lot of root mealybugs that we didn't ask for. And, you know, I just took cuttings, I put it in water first, and then I potted it in my own mix, and... Oh, oh, that's a nice surprise. Oh, they grew, they grew a lot since the last time I checked. So you can see abundance of water dripping on me and <laughs> abundance of roots. Another scenario, you are not familiar with the potting mix. If you're not familiar with the potting mix at all, if you have no experience growing a plant in it, it's better to repot. Repot is something that you're familiar with, that you know how to use. A lot of people don't really know how to use sphagnum moss, they compact it too much and it starts to rot the roots. So if your Hoya or any plant arrives in a potting mix that you're unfamiliar with, repot it. Last scenario, which is very unlikely, everything is fine, your plant arrived in a good mix, your plant is happy, the mix works with your environment. In that case, you can count your blessings, you are a lucky ducky and 
congratulations. Now, when we got your Hoya out of the potting mix and it's bare rooted or freshly rooted, depending if you had to save it or if you rooted a cutting yourself, it is time to pot it in a mix. So what's next? What are the three key elements to make your ideal Hoya potting mix? Well, I'm glad you asked. No one really asked. Shut up. Number one, aeration. Most of the Hoyas are epiphytic plants. They grow attached to the side of the tree and their roots grow in air. Now, I don't know why there is this force, this pushback that Hoyas are epiphytic plants. If we can accept that orchids are epiphytic plants, why can't we do the same for Hoyas? Is it because of the mix that they usually arrive in? Some of the Hoyas will tolerate less air in the mix, but some of them will just check out on you. See you never, bye forever. They will not take that crap. To make your Hoya happy, and if it's an epiphytic Hoya, not a terrestrial one, make sure there is a lot of air movement there. You know, make sure it is ventilated. Now don't let stuff get stagnant and stale in there. No one likes that really bad things happen when other things become stale. Larger pieces of potting media will provide ventilation and will allow for the air movement. You can use bark of different sizes to improve the ventilation. Usually for smaller cuttings I will use bark that is smaller for larger ones or for Hoyas that have very well established root systems or that grow chunkier roots because there are Hoyas that grow very thin roots, there are some that grow thicker roots. For those with thicker roots I will use larger pieces of bark. Other than bark, you can use some other things. You can use leca, you can use pumice, you can use lava rock, anything that will improve the aeration of the media. My personal preference is orchid bark, but pure orchid bark. Be very careful when you get an orchid mix. Usually there is a lot of peat in there, so make sure to read the label at the back to see how much orchid bark actually is there. Also, the selection of the pot can help with aeration. You saw that with some of my Hoyas, I use a net pot with a cover pot. Net pots will allow for air to get in there, the mix will dry out much quicker. I mean, if this is not a proof that they love a very well aerated mix and a lot of air, I don't know what is. I like to use net pots with cover pots because it allows me to creep on the roots at all times. I can see if they're growing, if they're dying back, if something is rotting, if there are root mealybugs present. So I can be a root lurker or a root creeper. Take into consideration that I have higher humidity. My humidity currently is 70%. I will say this infinite amount of times in this video. If you're growing your Hoya in a very dry condition, very dry climate, you may consider just using a clear orchid pot if you want to lurk on the roots. You can put some tiny holes with a soldiering iron uh, because, you know, you can, in net pots, you can see there, this is a lot of slits in the pot. So maybe this is not the best for you if you are living in very dry condition. Cover pot really helps. An additional benefit if you overwater, which doesn't happen for me, you can just take it out, let it dry out, put it back and call it a day. Element number two, drainage. If your mix is well aerated, it will be well draining. But if your mix is well draining, it does not necessarily mean it's well aerated. A lot of people think that well aerated and well draining mix are the same thing. They're not. And that's fine if you think so too. I used to think that before and then I smacked my head and I came to my senses. Well, I didn't actually smack my head, I just started to use my brain, the mushy thing in there. Sandy mixes are usually well-draining mixes. They're used for cacti and other similar plants. But Hoya is not a cactus, it's a tropical plant. Also, it is an epiphyte and cacti are usually terrestrial, terrestrial? What's that accent? A lot of the cacti are terrestrial plants. All epiphytic plants will prefer more air around the roots. Th this is what they're accustomed to. This is how they grow in nature. The particles of sand are very small, very tiny, and they make for a very compact mix. Sure, it will drain very fast, but there won't be abundance of air. It will not be something that these plants like. A lot of the times people will say that Hoya is very challenging and it's not always the case. They say this for Hoya Kerry, that it's very challenging for Hoya latifolia or macrophylla. I call it latifolia, you call it whatever you want. I know my is Hoya latifolia. They say this for Hoya linearis, Hoya undulata. 
if you adjust your mix and make sure that it's airy and well draining, you will not have these issues, I believe. I never had any issues with my Hoya Carry. I give it water once or twice a week and there is water sometimes in the reservoir. Never had an issue with rot, ever. Now, if you put your Hoya in a cacti mix, that is not a well aerated mix. It is well draining, but not well aerated. You can amend this mix. Sure, you can add bark to it and call it a day. And in that case, I would say it is fine. I still prefer to make my own mix with just bark and sphagnum moss. We will talk about this a bit later, but you can do whatever you want with your plant. But make sure to remember well aerated and well draining. So not just well draining, don't forget about the aeration. Now, you may say that you grow all your Hoyas in a cacti mix, and that's fine, I believe you. I believe you that they do really well. There are different types of Hoyas. Some of them will grow well in this type of mix, some of them will not have it. If you try to grow Undulata, Caudata, or some of those Hoyas with finer roots, they might not like this mix. And it's perfectly okay to accept that not all Hoyas are the same. It's true, people are different too, so why do we have to think that all Hoyas are the same? Just because it's a Hoya doesn't mean it will grow well in the same mix, in the same conditions, and so on. There are differences among them, just like there are differences among people. And maybe if we start to accept differences among plants, we will accept differences among people better. Or other way around. Accept the differences, be fine with it. That's your life lesson for today. And of course, the reason they're all different is because of the wide geographical range. You know, they grow throughout the Southeast Asia, from India to Thailand to Borneo, and the conditions will vary. Different elevations, some of them terrestrial, some of them epiphytic, some of them in cooler regions, some of them in warmer climates. So we cannot really grow them the same way all the time. But what I found to be true is that for most of them, if you use a mix that's well aerated and well draining, they will be okay with that. Of course, not all Hoyas will love super airy mixes. As I said, there are some exceptions. For some of Hoyas that like more moisture, you can actually just take Coco Coir and mix half of the Coco Coir, half of the Perlite, and use that as a mix. Actually, that is the mix that I use for my cuttings, and it's doing really well. I have Hoya Cortisi and Hoya Lacunosa, the silver one in those mixes. They're growing really well. You can see this is my Hoya Cortisi, it just got watered. There is a lot of perlite there, and as you can see, it's still very loose, even though I watered it and it's been in this mix for a while. The roots have grown all the way to the bottom, and if I just take a step back, you can see it looks good. So I know a lot of people are having challenges with Hoya Cortisi, but I'm not sure why. Even in Coco Coir, it does really well. And maybe you remember this Hoya Lacunosa, the silver one. It has baby Hoya leaves right there. I'm not sure if you can see if my camera is focusing. So this, this mix is slightly drier. It's still a lot of perlite in there. You can see actually on the side of the pot, there are roots growing. And yes, there is new growth happening. I would use for small cuttings like these, especially for Hoyas that you pin down, it's better to use coconut coir and perlite because bark can be too big for these Hoyas. I have coco coir in my coffee now. All in all, if you are going to use coco coir, perlite is your friend. Perlite is good, just add perlite there. Add it. A lot of perlite for good drainage. You don't have to use it with bark because that will all already give you good drainage, but if you're using something else like coco coir or if you're using a general potting mix with bark, I just add perlite in there. Perlite is good. Perlite is your friend. I like perlite. I'm in fact I'm I like perlite a bit too much. Each year I buy 100 liter bag of perlite. The third thing is moisture retention. Yes, Hoyas love moisture. There is this notion that Hoyas hate moisture. There is this notion that you should water Hoyas once a month. It's not true. I water my Hoyas once a week, some twice a week. My Hoya undulata in the back, it's in the mix of bark and sphagnum moss. This is a root that grew down here. It's actually now pushing a new leaf. This Hoya dries out for me super fast. I need to water it twice a week. People say this Hoya rots easily. That has not been my experience. 
uh, my experience has been that this is a very thirsty Hoya, and if I just water it once a week, the leaves will get super pliable and they will dehydrate. And actually this root, it did damage a bit uh, because I let it go dry for a bit too long because I was following the advice of people that this, this one really wants to dry out. Hasn't been my experience. In fact, if you think about epiphytic plants, if you think about orchids and Hoyas, they're still epiphytic plants, in their native habitats, they go through these quick cycles of getting abundance of water and drying out and on repeat, you know, they will get a lot of water and they will dry out very quickly. So they have fast, dry, wet, dry, wet cycles. You kind of want to replicate that in your home. Of course, you don't want to water maybe every day and that's perfectly fine, neither do I. I don't want to water every day. You could grow them just in bark and possibly water every day, every other day, depending on your conditions. But if you want to water less, you can add a bit of something that has that moisture retention. In my case, I add just a bit of sphagnum moss. You can add coconut coir. It's very good at retaining moisture. You can also use general potting mix. I used that before. Those are some uh, materials that are good for water retention. The good thing about it is you can also easily adjust. If you think Hoya wants mo more moisture, you can just add a bit more sphagnum moss. You can see here I have roots growing. And uh, you will notice when you pot a Hoya like this that they will actually, the roots will follow the moisture. These roots are actually growing along the sphagnum moss line and it's, well, it's because there is moisture there. In all plants, roots will follow moisture. Their purpose is supplying the nutrients in the water to the plant. So they will seek out moisture. If you let the plant dry out way too long, the roots will die back. There's no way around it. Of course, if you live in extremely humid environment, if your humidity for some reason is 80, 90% or above, you can completely avoid using anything that is moisture retentive and uh, you can just use plain bark in that scenario. If you live in a very dry climate, you might want to add a bit of more of something that will hold on to moisture. So maybe you will add more peat, more general potting mix or more sphagnum moss. It really depends on your preference and what you can find and what you think works for you. Of course, you will need to follow the first rule. It needs to be well aerated. Now, just a short word on semi-hydro. Semi-hydro is not magic. There it goes. I said it. It's not magical. When you think about it, it's actually quite similar to the mix that I use. It's just inorganic media. I use organic media, but I do have quite a bit of Hoyas that are also in semi-hydro. And you cannot deny that a lot of people, when they switch their Hoyas to semi-hydro, they get a lot of new growth rather quickly. And the reason for that is, well, there is a lot of air in semi-hydro and there is constant supply of moisture and nutrients. It's never really too wet. It's just even amount of moisture, just a tiny bit of moisture. A lot of people say that the, when the roots grow down in the reservoir, they will die back. This is not actually true. Water will not rot the roots. It will not make them die back. The reason why they might die back is if you let the reservoir dry out or if the water is too cold. You have to take into consideration that the roots that grow into semi-hydro and that grow down in the reservoir will grow in a constantly moist environment. Now, what happens when you take that away, when you let the reservoir dry out? Well, you are shocking them. You're quickly taking away something that they are used to. You're taking away all that moisture that they're used to and you're leaving them in a dry environment. And then they will start to die back. All of my Hoyas that are in semi-hydro do have roots in the reservoir, except of those that I just started in semi-hydro. And the roots are fine in the reservoir as long as they don't let it dry out too much. A good example of that is this Hoya verticillata. And if we're just very careful to not destroy this, uh, you can see there are roots that have grown in the reservoir. It's wet and the roots are fine. So they do not die back in the reservoir and you can just admire for a second this beautiful trellis that I made. It's not for sale. So as long as you make sure that the environment stays the same, that they don't go through some crazy changes of environment, the roots will be fine. 
And when you grow in semi-hydro, this quick wet and dry cycle doesn't really apply because LECA, when it gets dry, it can desiccate the roots. It will damage the roots. They will start to die back. It's fine to let the reservoir dry out for a bit, but don't go for days and days or weeks without any water in the reservoir. It's fine, it happens to me that maybe one day they will dry out and then I will give it water in a couple of hours. That's fine, that will not really damage the roots because LECA will stay moist. But if you let LECA go completely dry, then that environment is actually without any moisture at all and it will damage the roots. Just like when you put Hoya in regular potting mix, in organic potting mix and you let it dry out completely. I hope that this video was informative and that you have a better understanding of Hoya potting mixes and three things to watch out for. So let's recap quickly. It's aeration, drainage and moisture retention. All of the three things are important and to make a perfect Hoya mix you have to take into consideration all three of those things. Now, depending on your environment, you might need to make some adjustments. The mix that you use for your home may not be appropriate for my home in my conditions. I have 70% of humidity, and if I use a lot of peat, or if I put more sphagnum, uh, there will be too much moisture there. The same way, if I give you my mix and you live in an extremely dry environment, maybe your roots will die back if you don't water frequently. If you, for example, take my mix and water once a week or God forbid, once every two weeks, your roots will die back. If you live, of course, in a very dry environment. For me, in my environment, once a week or twice a week, with this mix, it does really well. My Hoyas do really well. The important thing to understand is there is no unique mix that will work for everyone. We all have different conditions, different temperatures, different humidities. Our lifestyles are different. Maybe I want to water frequently, maybe I don't, maybe you do or you don't. So we can adjust our mix, but we have to pay attention to those three things that are mentioned in this video that are the key elements of ideal Hoya growing mix. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel and you're loving the content, well, you know what to do. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I'm just kidding, I'm totally gonna tell you what to do. If you like the videos and you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get updates on my new videos. I also now have a Patreon page and the link to that will be in the description below. Now, before we go, um, who's we? There's, there's just me, there's just one person here. Before I go, I would like to ask you two questions. First, what is the mix that you grow your Hoya in? And two, what are your conditions? What is your environment? You can write that answer in the comments below. I would love to hear from you and to see how many different environments are there and how you deal with your environment. It's a good thing uh, for all of us to learn and maybe someone, if someone new is watching the video and they don't know what to do, maybe they can see your answer. Maybe they have a similar environment to yours and they can quickly see what works for you and they can try that and maybe it will work for them too. Thank you for watching and I hope you will have a Hoya fabulous weekend. Hoyabulous. Hoyalous. Nope. No, no, we're not gonna coin that word today. Maybe next time. I hope you will have a fantastic weekend and I will see you again in my next video. Bye. I would like to take some time to thank my wonderful patrons. A big shout out to my $5 patrons, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Kathy Allen, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Vicky Dingler, and I don't know why I'm dancing, but I am. Another huge shout out to my $3 patrons, Becca Panyard in a home, Ivana and Nikki, and a shout out to my $1 patron who remains anonymous. Thank you so much for your support. I hope that you're enjoying the videos. I will see you soon and I'll just continue to, to slightly dance. Let's hope no one ever sees that again.